those of you who haven't used dirty dirties, I don't know what they are, they are something like new um, alcohol-based markers. So they're different from the water-based markers and they get the most phenomenal results for colouring. That is basically um, one of the examples that you can see of blendability. I would like to have played more. Uh, in fact, some of the some of the stuff on my board it has got blendability on it as well, so you can see that. Uh, but they come in packs of three, and they come um, based on a something like colour. So this one is the daffodils of light. I've also got um, old olive, toasted cayenne, real red, and rich raspberry. And then there's also the skin tone collection as well, um, which are also useful for doing other things like the dental side. Just in case you think I don't have any people that I need to colour, they are very useful for other things. Now, these take a bit of patience and a bit of practice. Um, they're not something that you can just you do, oh, you know, quick scribble and you're done. Um, if you want to get results like that, then you need to spend a little bit of time doing it. So put your favourite movie on, sit in front of your favourite television show, or whatever it is that you like to do, and then get a bit playful with the ink. So the way I've done it, I've watched a couple of uh, things on YouTube to try and help me to understand, but I've also co uh, coloured with Copics before in the past, and so I know a little bit about how they work as well. Um, but after a bit of playing around, I've sort of discovered what works. So I'm going to start with the darkest one, and I've actually found that using the smaller tip is actually a lot better a lot of the time than using the fat tip. And I started off using the fat tip because that's how I did the colour with Copics. So, when I started using this, I actually really much preferred the, um, the effect that I got from it. So, I'm going to show you how I would go about colouring it. So, using this, the nice thing about the paper as well, is you can get into all the little areas in between here. And so, I'm going to start with a dark one, and I'm going to put the dark around the areas that I want shaded the darkest. I don't worry about the rest of that. I put a little bit underneath here because I try and think about how the light would um, come onto the uh, petal. And these bits here, it's kind of overlap, they kind of curl over. It would have a bit of a shadow underneath them, so that's how I um, do those. So I'll do a couple of petals so you can see. I should do the whole flower, but you might get bored. I wouldn't, but you might. I'm just going to do, and you don't need to have a lot of the darkest amount, the darkest colour. Okay? And then. The reason I've got the fact that the whole bunch of this, by the way, if you're wondering, is because they do bleed through, and so you don't really want to be putting it on the table. Because the table's not you. Um, so it has something underneath, and trying to show some easily works quite well because you can't really bleed through properly. Um, so there's your darkest one. Then I'm going to get the middle one, and I'm again going to use the small tip. And I'm going to go to where I've done that, the darkest one, and I'm going to scribble over the top. And I kind of like to do it in circular motion. And you need to keep going over the top of this until what you put on is blended with what you're putting on now, if that makes sense. And I'm still leaving a little bit more white there. But just keep going. You, you really want to saturate the paper. Um, it's not, and I think when you've been used to using the other type of markers, this kind of perhaps feels a bit odd because you, you wouldn't do this <laughs> with the other kind of markers. But you need to, to get the kind of shading that you want to get. Okay. So really go over the top of it. Going over the whole of what you've done before, anyway. Just Pretty the much, edge. I am. Okay. I, but the, the, the most important bit is the edge, because if you get the edge blended, right. then that will um, that will take you to the rest of it as well. Um, and it doesn't have to be the paper. No, that doesn't have to keep going. No, it will it will dry instantly because it's an alcohol based. So you could do the whole thing and then go back and do the next yeah. colour again. Yeah. yeah, I do tend to do it a section at a time just so that I don't know. I just like doing it that way. Do a section at a time. I mean, I don't know about the drying thing because I know, I mean, alcohol based markers dry pretty much instantly. And so, yeah, but I do like doing it a section at a time just so I can see. Now, in this one, I'm then going to get the satin. 
and I'm just going to swivel over the, right over the top and blend until I see that the colours are blending together. I'm going to go and do it lighter colour on those little tips as well. Yeah, this white is just hard to use. You can use raisin red as well, but for reason, uh, the, this white is just hard to use. Don't try and use watercolour or naturals or anything like that because it, it won't have the same effect. Um, and you really just need to go over that join. And you can see where it started to blend. That's how I would do the petals. And that's how I do the petals. And you can see if I bring that in here, the correlation there. Okay. And then the inside uh, bit, I've just used the two browns from the skin tones one. I've used this as a bronze. Um, you've got bronze and mocha. Do I have any more time? Um, and so I've used the bronze, the slightly li lighter one, and again, used the, sorry, wax my photographer there, um, with <laughs> the, the smaller tip. And because it's so detailed, you can just go over the top and colour in those little stems, the little stamens. And then I would go back in there and just make sure the flower bits are coloured with the um, darker one of the darker blue as well. And then the middle section just colour it as well. And then with the darker one, this is another way you can use the blendability, um, instead of using them for straight, you can just use them to add um, tone and colour on top. So I just use the darkest one in the centre, coloured over a few of the little centres there, and then around the outside. So I haven't blended these, they're just adding a bit of difference in colour. Again, you can see the finished one there. You can see the darker colour in the centre and around little bits around the outside. Now with this one, I cut it completely and then I did it again and I cut the little middle section out as well. So it's got a little bit of dimension on there as well. Thanks, Amy. Hi. Hi.